Are you all smiles? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Uh, my name is Gabby, and this is our first attempt at doing one of these things. So, welcome. Um, I've been watching podcasts for a while now, and sort of contemplating it. I started a blog and tried to keep that up and failed miserably. Um, but sort of inspired by a lot of the new podcasters that have come out, not come out, um, started recently and decided that it was my turn. I can do this too. So this is a, hopefully, knitting, uh, crafting, sewing, um, puppy podcast with some other learning how to be an adult kind of things mixed in there. Yes. And this is Iron, uh, one of our corgis. He's a Pembroke Welsh corgi. He's about a year old. His name means God of Slaughter, if you can't tell. Right? Um, and you might hear our second corgi, Audrey Beyonce Hepburn, crying in the background because the cat is hiding in his litter box. And that is the worst thing that's ever happened, so... If you hear any other weird noises, it's probably her. So hopefully they will join us for many episodes. Uh, I don't know if this is a permanent corner to do this in. It is quite late. And we live in an attic apartment, so we don't get a lot of natural light. So we're trying out some new spots for this new thing. So here we go. Um... I think that's all I wanted to say for introductions. Um, mostly that there's going to be a lot of name dropping because A, I am new. B, all I do essentially is watch podcasts uh, where I work. Um, I have about eight hours a day where I don't really need to talk to people besides like my boss and a couple co-workers. So, stop doing that. Um, I just listen to podcasts all day and all night. I also have a very long train ride. I do work, yes, right outside the city and on the Metro North Line for New Haven. So I have about a two-hour commute each way on the train. I have a very tiny lap, and he is a very large dog right now. So I get to get a lot of knitting time and a lot of podcasting time then. So if it sounds like I'm just literally listing people during these things, it's probably because I am. Um, example, I watched the entire T of the Kilt to Craft podcast today, and that's when I decided I'm going to do this tonight. Let's go. So, here we are. Don't drink that. He's just got my coffee. I have a box of cookies off to the side that he really wants, and he loves to smell yarn, so I thank you for that. So, with that, I think we should start with some of our works in progress. Actually, we're going to pause here and get my charger because my laptop is dying. So, okay, we're back and charged and we're good. And the dogs have left us. So, um, and my scarf is all messed up now. This is not a work in progress. This is the Campside Shawl by Alicia Plummer, I believe. Um, in case you were wondering, it's my first big shawl. So I'm very excited with it. A lot of these are a first. I have been crafting essentially my entire life, as far as I remember. Uh, I learned how to knit when I was wee little thing. End of elementary school, beginning of middle school, I want to say. Um, I learned how to crochet before that. And then I picked up knitting again in high school, and then dropped it, and then picked it up again in college, and then dropped it, and then... Um, that's the wrong needle in this bag. Um... Picked it up again recently with my commute. So, lots of train knitting. Heads up. Again, I'm really ooh, 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 knocking things over. Uh, I am sorry for what my glasses are doing. So, yeah, works in progress. Um, first one is a top down uh, two by two ribbed hat in, um, it's in knit, ooh, my nail's stuck, knit picks, uh, the 100% Peruvian wool in their Aurora Heather colorway. Um, boyfriend has 
three nephews and four nieces from one sibling. So boys are getting hats, girls will be getting tube socks because I have lots of tube sock yarn and that's super easy for kids. So uh, averaging about a skein of yarn a hat, hence the top down. So then I'll know if they're drastically tiny. They're not large children. They're, I think, ranging between four and 11. There's three boys. So I just, just hope they don't have giant heads. I haven't seen them in a year, about, so. Work in progress number one. And that's on US size seven DPNs. And they're the knit picks, nickel plated. I went on a DPN spree recently because I needed them for another project, so I figured why buy one size when you can buy four and get free shipping, so. Yes, hello, Pumpernickel. Iron's back. You want to come up? No, you just want to smell the yarn. Um, <coughs> I've also been recovering from this weird forever cough that kind of feels like the thing in history books when they say, and then they never recovered. So I'm sorry if I have a weird raspy voice or weird coughing fits. But I have my pumpkin ice cream in my Ewer mug that I got for high school graduation. I love him, he's my favorite. And it started downpouring, so again, I'm sorry for the pitter patter. Um, next ready for the name drops, is the Verdu Shawl by Isabel from the Fluffy Fibers podcast. Um, it is a paid pattern on Ravelry, and I am in love with it so far. I'm only in the body. I think I have another 17 rows until I can start the lace. I might go more because I knit very tight, so this seems rather small to me. But maybe it's not. Um, I'm knitting it on my own colorway. I do, I recently started dyeing yarn, which I'll get into more. Uh, the colorway is Dark Like My Soul. Uh, it's showing up very, it must be my wallpaper. Um, it's not as blue bright blue as my screen's making it out to be. Um, it's um, <clears throat> dark blues and purples and some blacks and grays, which are all showing up purple. And it's on um, my sparkly base, which I don't have a fun name for yet. This one's super sparkly, which is not picking. Oh, there's some. Uh, it's I want to say 70% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 10% stellina, the silver stellina, which I wish it would show up more because a lot of the stellina dyed blue in the pot, which I think is, oh, you can kind of see it in the corner there, which I thought was really cool. I have dyed other colorways and the dyes did not take to the stellina, but I don't know if it's just because... I am new and I think I used way too much dye for this one, but um, it's fingering weight and I'm just super excited to get to the lace part of it. And this is, um, it's part of the Sparkle Knit Along from the Bookish Stitcher podcast with Jeanette. She's holding that between November and December and it is also in my make two along for um, Jenny's podcast, The Tiny Paper Foxes. Um, what's wrong, Pumpkin? The cat won't play with her. Yeah, it's a make two along, so the object is to make two things, knit, crochet, so, so I'm knitting this and I don't have any of it sewn up yet. I just have all the pieces ironed out and cut out. But I'm going to make a dress in this fabric. Nice and wrinkly. Oh, and turning pink. Nope, nope. There we go. That's closer. So, this will be a dress. 
this will be the shawl. And I'm super excited. I'm hoping to have these done by mid-December. So, we will see. And that is in a prototype bag that I made when I first got back into bag knitting and sort of conquered the zipper for real instead of just fake conquering it. Um, it's not my best work. I did try and mash too much stuff in it and started ripping the seams, but it was a fun prototype and I really like the fabric and I'm sad I can't find it anymore. So yeah, it's a good purse bag which is how I judge all my bags because everything must fit in my purse for the train. Next is um, in an actual bag that I made for realsies, not a fakesies one, um, but once upon a corgi bag, which is my Etsy shop, which I will talk about in later segments. So I've got a little, ooh, will stop making you dizzy. Uh, a little hand embroidered corgi on it. In my bee fabric. I love this fabric. Easy zipper. Plain yellow inside. And the bag of this that I have in the shop is actually a drawstring bag with a super adorable, it's got bears and honey pots on them. I just couldn't resist. And in this I have, let's not pull the stitches off, the bartender socks. Which are socks for the wife of boyfriend's bartender because he works in a restaurant. They're a plain vanilla sock, um, cuff down with a two by one ribbing for the cuff, uh, fish lips kiss heel, which I'm just sort of starting to get a grasp on. This is only my um, technically fourth heel, but I did one pair of socks with it, royally messed that up, so I'm practicing again. And it is on my Winter Storm colorway on my Sparkle base. And it's got uh, the blues and whites, a little bit of gray, and some silvers, and my super wintry bee progress keeper to go with my bag. And they are on size US1 2.25 millimeter needles, I believe. Um, zooming by, I'm averaging... This doesn't sound zooming at all, now that I think about it. Uh, half a sock a week, um, which is really good for me. Usually my projects take forever because it's me. I'm really good at putting things down and never picking them back up again. It's sort of a notorious habit of mine. But I'm hoping to get this off the needles this week and start the second sock next week and get that done by the end of November because it is... November 12th already, and Christmas is coming fast. Sip of coffee. Iron is sitting on my couch, staring lustfully at the box of treats. And our next project is in a freakish lemon bag. A little angry lemon. Oh, he's so mad. So excited. That I got for my birthday. I love this fabric. I have a Notions pouch with, uh, I think, this angry, this guy on it. And it's so cute. I don't know where the pouch went. It's got this fun orange fabric. I like his bags a lot. They're super nerdy and geeky and soft, and they're super mushy. I think his new ones have interfacing in them, so they're a little sturdier, but this fits in my bag. No problem. So, I like it a lot. And these are the Hulk socks. This is going a lot smoother the like third time around because I messed up the first time. So now I know what I'm saying. Um, Hulk socks. They're Hulk themed. I have tried to make my boyfriend socks recently and his gigundo feet couldn't even fit his like to hear. It was awful. I was so mad. So I cast on 102 stitches as an essentially knit around his foot. And so I'm decreasing to 96 just so they're a little snugger. But this is the giant man feet socks. He's a size US 13. 
So I feel like they shouldn't be this big, but he's got weird shaped feet. And it is in the Malabrigo uh, sock in their Fresco y so Seco? Fresco y Soco? Fresco y something colorway, and uh, that's the green. Sorry. And then their Abril for the purple. So uh, toes, heels, and cuffs will be in the purple. And then the body and the, the foot and the leg will be in the green. So his Hulk socks for his massive Hulk feet. They're a good mindless knit. They're going to be plain vanilla with probably a heel flap. Reinforced like eight yards um, <laughs> of yarn because he is on his feet for about 15 hours a day. Give or take 100 hours because he does work, he's a manager at a restaurant, so I want these to last him a little while, because this takes forever to knit. If you have a man with giant feet that you knit for, you understand. So, <coughs> excuse me, those are those socks, and I believe that's all the works in progress I have. Oh no, I have one more, I can't show you because it's a surprise but I can show you the yarn. It is Brooklyn Tweeds Shelter Base in their Wool Socks colorway. And I just really love how mushy this and soft this yarn is. I don't love how easy it is to break. I knit quite tightly. But I have, it's super, I just learned how to like felt them back together. So I'm not terribly mad. But I love this colorway. It's got the uh, the reds and the browns and the yellow speckles, and it's super mushy, and it's super soft. And I can't wait for this project to be done so I can snuggle it forever. But yeah, that's it. I will show you that probably around Christmas. It is hopefully going to be a Christmas present. So uh, now. All of our works in progress are done. Yes, okay. Everything's everywhere. I had it all organized. I did this. I unorganized everything. And now I'm redoing it. Audrey, come here. So, uh, finished objects. I only, I only have two. Again, I have two for episode number one. So I think that's a pretty good start. Uh, one of which is a nephew hat. And it is the Onyx Heather colorway from Knit Picks. Um, cuff, or top down, top down, 2 by 2 ribbing. This is for the youngest one, so I'm just hoping, excuse me, he doesn't have a massive head. And that it will grow with him. So we'll see. Um, Knit Picks said that. Uh, US 7 needles, just like the last one. And I already have the yarn for the last hat I need to knit ready to go in their sapphire heather colorway. It's very blue. It's probably eh, it's about close to this. So ready to go. Taking Christmas down one project at a time. More coffee. And my second or finished object is the Over the Sea to Sky Shawl by uh, how do I say that? Calora Hudson? Calora Hudson? Uh, it's on Ravelry. It is a paid for pattern now. It wasn't when I got it. I think she was having a promotion um, right as the newest season of Outlander was showing. So, you watch Outlander. Welcome. Uh, it's not safe for kids, so if you were wondering, don't. Um, it's an asymmetrical shawl. Get me back up a little bit. And it's big, and I love it. And it's just simple. Got garter stitch, stockinette stitch, uh, this eyelet, a lace section, and my first Pico bind off. I can actually show it. There it is. So I ignored, oops, 
I'm throwing needles. Ignored the directions completely when I knit this. Um, it is out of Wonderland yarns in their fingering base, 100% superwash merino, and it's the Too Much Pepper colorway. So you can. Yeah, it's like a grayish, a warm gray, I would say. Um, the recipe, the recipe, the pattern calls for a worsted weight or a DK weight, I believe. I would have to look it up. It will be in the show notes, so don't worry. Um, so I just sort of bought yarn without thinking. I'm not that mad about it. I love the way it came out anyway. I just went up uh, three or four needle sizes. Um, I think this calls for like a f uh, five or a six, and I went up to a, between a seven and a nine. I, again, I knit tightly, so I was worried that if I knit it too tight, it would turn out teeny tiny, which has happened before. I tried to knit a little shawlette. Turns out I knit armor, like steel-plated armor, basically, and instead of a nice shawlette, it came out like this wide. About as wide as an iPhone, so... Needless to say, that is going to a very small child, probably, because that won't fit around my face. So, it's light, it's airy, it's definitely going to be a springtime shawl. When the weather starts to warm up again, I say that, like, winter isn't just starting, but I've already worn it a couple times, so it's really good for, like, a late fall day. Um, I have been known to wear multiple shawls in one go. I love scarves. I'm always wearing one. It's like a security blanket to me. So, I'll probably just don this over a winter scarf and then, oop, I didn't weave in that end. Oops. So, I love it. I highly recommend it. It's very popcorn-y because each section is only about uh, 10 or 12 rows. So, it's a real quick, like, oh, I'll just stock it up this. Oh, I'll just garter stitch this. Oops, I'm done. So, finished object number two. And it's so soft. I only, I had to break into the second skein that I bought, literally just for the bind off. That's it. So, I have almost a full skein of this yarn, ready and waiting. And I have a couple ideas, I'm just waiting for more yarn to come in. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't really talk this much, so I'm sorry if my voice goes weird. So, finished objects. That is it. Uh, on to spinning. Uh, not a lot of spinning. I only drop spindle at the moment. So it's slow progress, but I did just finish a little nest that I broke off um, on my great dye experiment of 2015. I dyed four different kinds of fiber, and this is the Superwash Merino Merino Silk Blend Fiber that I hand painted which turns out takes a lot of dye to do. Um, this is the fourth little nest out of the braid that I've spun. It is the first thing I've spun on my new drop spindle. I got a rind back. I love it. It's so cute. So far, so good. I have just learned how to not, um, I want to call it park and ride. The the charge and park, where you spin it, charge it, and then go. And I've, um, I've recently figured out how to actually spin it while it's, spin the yarn while the spindle is spinning, doing this, this kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping to acquire a wheel, maybe for Christmas, if not soon after. I'm saving my pennies. So, I'm trying to get really good at this so then I can justify moving up into the spinning world. So this is the thinnest I think I've ever spun um, and the most even. It's not very even. I will give it that, but it's pretty even for me. And this is on, uh, we were at the New England Fiber Festival this past weekend, which I hopefully will speak about if I remember at the end a little bit. Um, and I needed bobbins. I've been storing all my spun yarn on knitting needles because I don't have any bobbins. And I have fiber in my mouth or dog hair. Sorry. Um, so I was looking at bobbins so then I could go up and 
wheel practice somewhere, probably on my brother's wheel, and then be able to take my yarn away at the end of the day because he only has a limited amount of bobbins. So I got these antique ones for 50 cents each. I got six of them. And I like them. I'm going to build them a little, um, like a carriage wheel. I have fiber in my mouth. Um, kind of thing. Eh, it's still there. Okay. <laughs> so, like a little lazy Kate, but like a, a picnic wheel. A picnic wheel? Yeah, me. Um, something like that. Just the oldies. I like them. I love antique things. I'm super excited for this fiber. I've been storing a lot of fiber, so I'm really excited to get into some real spinning very soon. So that's spinning. Uh, sewing, we have the Make Too Along happening. By we, I mean Tiny Paper Foxes has a Make Too Along happening that I'm participating in. Um, I don't have anything to show for it, uh, but Hopefully next time. So on to stash building. Um, I am working on a stash. I probably shouldn't be because of limited tiny apartment space and tiny apartment funds, but we're building one anyway. So deal with it, I guess, wallet. I'm apologizing now. <laughs> so uh, like I mentioned, we did go to the New England Fiber Festival or, yeah, the New England Fiber Festival this past weekend. It was my first time going. It was super exciting. Uh, I wish we could have gone on Saturday, but my mom was working. I'm also glad we didn't go on Saturday because that's when it's super crowded. That's when all the big competition for the sheep and the fleece happened. So I'm glad we had the last day to just sort of walk around and chill and take our time and not have to fight anybody. I did go to Rhinebeck this past year past month um on Saturday and that was so exciting and so much fun and if anybody that I met there is watching hello I made it I'm a podcaster now <laughs> um yeah it was great but it was a lot of people uh I don't do well in large crowds if you get talking to me uh, usually panic will just take over and I'll seem super excited and outgoing, but 900% of the time I'm just a nervous anxiety wreck. So I usually just start speaking very loudly and high pitched and essentially just screaming or weeping your choice. Depends on who you are or what, how much coffee I've had. So, <coughs> uh, yeah, glad we were able to go on a day that was not Terribly busy, but still pretty decently packed. So that was super exciting. So all of the stash enhancement is from that day. Um, the plan was to only get fiber. I didn't. So, whatever. Um, I'm just going to keep drinking all my coffee. This is a very interesting first episode. I will admit that. Here it is. So, my first not fiber that I got... Um, is from 100 Ravens, and she does a lot of nerdy, booky, geeky, everything, yarns. Um, their collect main collection, I want to say, um, they had a bunch of patterns based off of it, but they did Wizard of Oz theme yarns, and they've done Lord of the Rings, um, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Van Gogh, uh, just Doctor Who. There's a lot of Doctor Who yarn, which was super exciting. I almost picked up a couple of those. But I got the Jon Snow colorway. Isn't that great? So it is a um, in their Danube base. Uh, it's a worsted single ply, um, 240 yards. It's so mushy and soft, and I just want to literally wrap it around my head and sleep in it. That's how soft it is. So, that's the end of the podcast. Welcome. I'm just going to fall asleep here. I'm kidding. Please don't go. Um, and I got a uh, raven's wing to go with it in the same same base, Danu. 
So I'm thinking either knitting these alternatingly or doing a body of a shawl and a border of a shawl, but I, I just want to make a bedtime shawl in these. I was um, inspired by, um, once again, Jeanette from the Bookish Stitcher podcast. Um, she made like a reading nighttime shawl, the Iberian Express, I want to say, by Stephen West, out of a singles, I think. I could be making all this up, but I'm fairly certain this is all relatively true. She made a giant shawl out of singles, and it was mushy and soft, and it just sounded so great. So, I impromptu got these guys to do it. Do you want to come back up? Iron's going to come join us. Come on! Come here! We'll get you a cookie. Come on, Rose. He's only 25 pounds, I swear. He's just very long and lanky. There you go. A cookie? Give Audrey a cookie? She doesn't want to come on my lap. And then, across the uh, aisle, actually, new to me yarn, but I'm super excited I found them. Uh, they're called Nice and Knit. I'm not sure where they're based out of. But they are super soft. The setup reminded me of um, Oh Wool. Actually, that's why I went in there first. And then I realized that they weren't. And I was not mad. They had a lot of the Babel hats on display. And a lot of um, kits. Which I thought was super cool for like pillows and stuff. So I got two skeins of their DK weight. In their harpoon colorway because boyfriend has requested a scarf. He has a scarf from my mom, and he loves it. And he's waiting for his socks. And he's got an old hat I made years ago that is way too big for my head. So he also loves that. So we're going to actually make him something. Because it's time. You going to smell it? No? So those are the yarns I got. Not planned at all. I knew I wanted to get stuff. Boyfriend also dropped the scarf thing on me probably the morning before because I was making him feel all of my stuff. I'm like, ooh, feel this shawl. Feel these socks. Isn't this the best? And he was like, where's my scarf? Where's my sweater? So now he gets a scarf. And I also got what we went for, fiber. I was just going to get some regular, like, merino roving, but my friend, who loves Shetland wool, because she has Shelties, as Sheltie owners do, said get Shetland wool. So I did. So we have four ounces of this Shetland roving, and this will be for practice spinning when I get to a wheel. Um, I also have a lot of... Um, dye practice roving in my fiber stash that I'm going to use too. So when I get relatively good, I want to use this and maybe turn it into something. And this is from the Rosefield farm. I'm not sure what they're based out of. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania farm. And I also got the, I call them bits and bobs. And the two ladies at the register, I thought it was adorable. Um, Leicester roving little one ounce balls we've got um this yellow and gold and then this brown and orange and gold and then this red purple lobby one so i wanted to get different fibers to sort of practice on different textures and figure out like what i had to do for each one kind of thing because i am still learning i've only been spinning for maybe, I bought my first spindle in, uh, maybe a year ago, and I didn't pick it up until maybe last Christmas. And then I didn't actually do anything until quite recently. So, still a learning process, but now I just want to dive in at first and go, go for all of it. And the last things I got there, I got the bobbin, did the bobbins. Um, the last fiber things I got there was from 
Bitsy Knits, which new company to me. Uh, I basically all these except for 100 Ravens is new. But they had yarns and luxury fibers. So, oops. sorry for the crinkling. Um, I got this merino base in their Angry Mourner colorway. And they had all the colorways on different bases. Excuse you. So, like, they had this on the Mashlin and a Superwash Merino, a regular Merino, I think one other one. And it was just super cool to see next to each other how the dyes took differently. And it's got all the purples and browns and grays. <coughs> Excuse me. Browns aren't showing up with the camera. So, four ounce braid of that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Maybe a shawl. Maybe an accent color or something. Are you that mad? Yeah? I'm ready to get a coffee. Um, and then I got the luxury braids. So these little two ounce guys. And this is the Murderous Mermaid colorway. And it is 50% superwash merino, 50% tensile. Which I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it looks like silk but it also doesn't look like it's taking color, so maybe bamboo of some sort. So, that's gonna be super exciting. And they did have um, packs of these. So you had a four ounce and a two ounce together, and they were sock spinning kits. So you could do, um, does that smell good? <laughs> spin your body of the sock and spin your toes and heels of the sock. So, I thought that was cool. They didn't have either of these colorways. So, you gotta buy both of them, obviously. Go big or go home, right? Right, pumpkin butt? So that's that. That's our stash enhancement. I think that, 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 yeah. I think that is it for stash enhancements. Um, I guess on to, um, we'll do shop updates real quick. I do have an Etsy shop. It's a still new, I'm still learning kind of thing. So not a lot up, not going to be a lot in mass amounts. Um, I have recently started dyeing yarn in small, small batches, maybe one or two skeins at a time. So uh, I'm hoping to have some permanent colorways and then a lot of them I think I'm just going to do one of a kind depending on what I'm trying to make. So these will be in my shop update this weekend. Hopefully this video will go up on Friday or Saturday. We'll see how well I can edit. Hey, don't knock that down! Iron's causing mischief. Look at that mischievous face. So, here's a skein of the Winter Storm colorway. And it's got blues and grays and silvers and uh, the white. And it is on a sparkle base. So, as I said, I could be wrong. It's on the Etsy shop. I'll put it in the show notes. 70% um, superwash merino, 15% uh, nylon, and 10% silver stellina. So we have one of those going up. Um, I think I only have one of these going up. I don't know if I need the second one for my Verdu shawl yet. But we have a dark like my soul to go in. And this has the blues and the dark purples and the blacks and some grays and it is on the sparkle base. I think I'm going to keep this one just the sparkle base unless somebody really wants it on another base. I only have two right now so you either get sparkles or no sparkles. There they are. So one of these, maybe two. We'll see how well the shawl goes. Um, yes, dark like my soul. Do you want to get down? You can get down. <clears throat> nope. Eh, nope. Okay. We're not getting down. And then this is a variation on I Have a Good Night Moon colorway from the kids, the children's book. So I was playing with the dyes. I was trying to see if I could get a similar effect with a different dye technique. Turns out you don't. But I'm not that mad. So um, it's a lot more muted. It's a lot more tonal and less 
harsh variegations, not harsh variegations, sudden var uh, color changes. So, yes, I know. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Please don't fall off my lap. So it's got some red. My camera's not picking it up very well, probably because of my poor lighting. It looks very greeny, the shadows. Um, some reds, some purples, some blues, greens. The yellow didn't take really at all. It just sort of turned into blues or greens. But it was fun to see how all the colors mix. We did some blue greens. So I think that was supposed to be the yellow. That tried to be yellow. So this is a one of a kind variation. I don't know if I'll keep it the same name, but it was a good attempt. It was a fun experiment. I liked it. And then last but not least, we have our Christmas candy speckled. And there's a couple of these in the shops. I uh, forgot to mention, these two are on my normal sock, my basic base. Uh, it's 80% BFL, 20% nylon. Fingering weight, um, 100 grams, about 413 yards, I believe. So it's got the pinks and the red speckles and green speckles. Um, and I have... Uh, I believe two on my BFL base and one on my sparkle base available. I did have fun doing these, so I did them a couple times. I also wanted to see if I could recreate them back to back and then um, a couple weeks later to see if I could remember. Oh yeah, are you wearing it? Thank you. So those will be in the shop this weekend. Um, <coughs> Yes, along with uh, whatever colors I have up there. Uh, some one of the kinds. I do have my Good Night Moon up there. And I do have um, my Lollybrock colorway from Outlander. Um, that was really what kind of got me started on dyeing yarns. I just wanted an Outlander colorway, so I made one. Um, and I believe that's it for shop updates. Cool, right? Mm. Um... Puppy news, uh, we did not have our Corgi meetup this, yet this month. That is this weekend, I believe. But we are not sure if we're going to make it because this guy here, somehow, without managing to injure his sister or his mother, uh, sprained his leg or ankle. He's still sort of limping a little bit because... He um, spent the weekend at my parents' house while I was up there, and his sister loves to rough house, and she's about a third of his size and can take him down, no problem. She is queen bee, really. So I don't know what they did. No one knows what they did. I have a feeling apples were involved since there's a lot of apple trees in my parents' house. So he did something. So I we're probably gonna skip. The Corgi Meetup this month. Yes, we are. So, since there's no puppy news, I guess I will give you a little history about the puppies. As an introduction, um, I had Audrey uh, since she was eight weeks old. She's about three now. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, a couple years ago, we met her boyfriend, Sir Isaac Newton, the Corgi. Um, Romance story. It was beautiful. It was lovely. We decided puppies. So we had puppies. Uh, she had a litter of seven last October. And Iron is one of her seven. She had four boys and three girls. He was the only tricolor. Um, we kept all of the tails. Um, and they all went to relatively um, close homes. A couple of them went out west. Uh, one went up pretty far north. So, we do see them regularly, and I'm so happy for it, because life would not be the same without all of them in my life. So, that's <coughs> our quick uh, puppy update. Yes, do you have anything else you need to add? You have to tell the camera. Yes, I do. So, I think that wraps it up for our first 
episode. Um, yeah, we're hoping, I say we, like the dogs are really in charge of this. I'm hoping to do this about twice a month, not every week, close to every other week. Um, I don't get a lot of projects done that quickly, nor do I do a lot of stuff to tell you about it. So I figured that was a good medium. I fear if I do it once a month that I'll forget to do this after a little while. So I'm holding you guys accountable. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. Don't. What? I know. I, this is awful ending. We gotta work on that one. So thank you for watching our first episode. Uh, I look forward to continuing this adventure. Uh, I will eventually probably put up a Ravelry group. Um, we'll see how well I can organize things. Um, and just a giant thank you to all the podcasters that have been doing all of their work without all of you. I probably would not be this inspired. I definitely would not have the guts to do this any other way. So just a giant thank you to all of you. Whoever I've mentioned, I'll put links in the show notes. Um, yeah, I guess I just want to say a giant... Um, again, just a giant thank you to everybody who does this because it's been such an inspiration to knit more, to sew more, to just sort of get out there instead of, like, knitting in a dark hole and cackling to myself, like, I made the shawl! <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, that was weird. Um, yeah, it's been a good social experience, I think, getting on Instagram and doing all that and just sort of words. I don't know what to say. So I'm just going to keep thanking everybody for <laughs> being such an inspiration. Um, yeah, you can find me literally everywhere as Gabigales, uh, Abigail with a G in front of it. Uh, Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter. Um, Etsy shop is upon a corgi. Once upon a corgi was taken, apparently. Or not available. I, I'm a I'm looking to try and change it, but uh, a Ponticorgi, um, yes, yes, uh, show notes right now will be at onceuponacorgi.wordpress.com, um, and that, uh, if you are interested, we did document the whole puppy experience from conception to last week, essentially with a, about six month break in between the puppies and the name. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? So yeah, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, I hope this will be more organized and less rambly next time. Uh, and yes, excuse you. Uh, here's to knitting and crafting, and most importantly, these pumpkin butts. Have a good week!